Can we start with the Mavericks and the Suns, Ryan? Is that okay with you? Yeah, yeah, let's roll. Okay, so look, this is uh, this is something that has been occurring much more much more uh, repetitively in the NBA than uh, than I can ever remember, and that's where fans and their actions are causing them to get ejected from from stadiums, from arenas. And so what happened was, yesterday during a game which, I mean, really, this is taking away from the fact that that was an awful basketball game to watch. The officiating was bad, but part of the reason the officiating is bad is everybody's flopping, and so it's really hard to tell, like, is that a foul? Is that a foul? Like, if they're all just falling down, you almost feel like, okay, what if we call no fouls? If we call no fouls, then it gets too physical, and then everybody wants to fight or somebody gets hurt, right? Yeah. So apparently there's... I don't know if he's a heckler or what it was. It was a young dude, hoodie, uh, under jersey. He had a little earring in the right ear. D- did you did you ever rock the earring? No, no, I never had the earring look. No, no hoop look. <laughs> no, it was. Uh, yeah, I think it was the. It was the. It was the diamond, uh, diamond pendant, diamond stud, or whatever. Um, he had the earring in the ear, and uh, he, on some level, either heckled or made contact with. Somebody of Chris Paul's family. First thing is, like, th- I understand you don't want anybody touching anyone in your family. I don't know what that all means, though. Like, do we know, like, was there, like, a legit two-hand push? Was there, or is it, like, it's people are close to each other and jostling? I have no idea. I do know that, like, some of this is fans step over the line. Some of it is that players are way more sensitive to things being said to them than they ever have been. So I guess, Ryan, the question is, which do you think it's more of? I think that we've seen since COVID, fans have been crossing the line. And I'll say this, when when I played, fans crossed the line, but you didn't always necessarily see it. But I think, you know, think back like Trey Young, the spitting in the – on him that was like crazy a couple things that had been built up towards you know this this villain narrative with Russell Westbrook and then people feel like because he you know he's kind of opinionated that they can challenge him physically uh verbally on the floor like they feel like they have a beef with Russell Westbrook uh which is disgusting to me like it's personal uh and I think just whatever happened I I hear just pushing of any there's any contact from a fan at all, to Chris Paul's family, and I'm sure there was. I, I know Chris; he wouldn't act in that behavior without it being such. Oh, I'd, I'd lose it. I'd lose my marbles if I saw my family being touched, being pushed to, to any degree by anybody. Don't care if it's a a middle schooler with a hoop in his earring, and let alone touch your mother on Mother's Day, your wife on Mother's Day. It's on. I, it, Chris Chris did pretty well to not be restrained <laughs> to be. Restrained the way he was, so it's inexcusable. But I think to answer what you're saying, Doug, there's th- this element had always been there, but there's a different level of entitlement from the things I'm seeing today. A different level of entitlement from the fans or from the players? From the fans, from See, the I fans to get more hands on, the fans to feel more entitled. Yeah, I feel like they're more a part of the game, or they're more. Yeah, I look, I I do think there's a little of that. I mean, it's here's here's the progression of it, right? It started with. Uh, it started with uh, message like message boards, right? And work from message boards to whether it's Reddit, or then it worked its way uh, towards Twitter and all different types of social media. I think the worst thing we do in in media, this is the absolute worst, is and it's more like e news and those types of shows. Okay, the worst thing that we do is we put up on screen somebody who. Average Joe. That's the problem with social. The great mm. thing about social media is is the downfall of social media. The great thing about social media is everybody is kind of equal. But the truth is that everybody isn't equal. Everybody's opinion doesn't matter. It just doesn't, right? And and now Twitter tried to separate. Go, hey, there's blue checks. The blue checks somehow matter. If you're not a blue check, you don't matter. So that should be maybe at least the line of who we pay attention to or what we pay attention to. I guess the problem with that is that even 
even the Kevin Durant's of the world or, or whoever else is a really powerful part of social media, when they see non-blue check but guys come at them or people come at them, they clap back at them. Those people, you have to, they don't matter. And if you make them matter, if you amplify their voice, now the sudden they feel that. They, that's the, again, that's the device, that, that's the power of social media is that it makes all of these people feel like they, they belong in the conversation. They're part of the game. They're part, so I think that empowers them. Um, obviously, you know, you put alcohol, you put the proximity to the court, whatever. But I would also tell you that because those voices are amplified on social media, there's also the players who got to stop turning around. They got to stop reacting to people. There's a, on every ticket you've ever gotten, there's the ability for a player to just go, you, you're gone. That's it. They don't, there's no question about it. If it really bothers you, just go, he's gone. And then that's it. Or you just keep walking. You have to just keep playing. It doesn't make it okay what people are saying, but your the, the reaction and the overreaction to those things, I think, only make it worse. Yeah, but here, well, here's an element. There, there's someone heckling you. There's someone saying something. And whatever, it's a part of the game. You hear them yelling. You hear them chirping. It's, it's not a big deal. And, I, and I've had this situation before myself. Um, all right, cool. He's saying this. He's saying this. Whatever. All right, we're competing. Maybe he says something to you at the wrong time. Irritates you. All right. Part of the game, though. The fan starts to amplify it to the next level. When you're hearing family, when you're hearing your children, when you're hearing your loved ones uh, brought into a a matter, now it's no longer sport. So, no, players, I don't think, mind the original heckling, the, oh, you're not good, okay, you suck, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But the derogatory speech, uh, when you bring family in tune, that's when people flip the switch. And, Doug, you know, you, you played two or three quarters of a basketball game, you're fired up. You're, 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 you're excited. You're in it. You are at a, a physical peak. You are in war mode. When People don't understand, when you play in the NBA – your instincts are almost like they're a 10 of 10. You you are running as fast as you can to dive on a loose ball. You're jumping as high as you could jump. There's a, a split-second reaction where you're sprinting back on defense. You are emotionally into it, Doug, and you know what that's like. So when you walk to the bench after a frustrating foul or play, emotions are in it, and someone says something foul to you, you don't always have that level of respect where you're like, oh, man, you know – um, Hey, security, come get this guy. You may speak, speak or clap back, and that's where teammates come involved. So, hey, I'll say it. I played with Matt Barnes. I played with Boogie Cousins. So I knew if I would be on a bench or there and someone was saying something, Boogie was charged up. As a teammate, I'd jump right in. <laughs> as a teammate, I'd jump right in before something can go. So you also got to take care of your brothers, you know. But in, this, in the instance of Chris Paul, I don't care what's going on. If you see your mother and your wife, Having an altercation with any with anybody, let alone a male, oh, I'm ready to go into the stands. And you may not have the luxury to just say, ah, oh, man, hey, security, go take care of that guy. No, 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 no. As a husband, you're going in there. I think it was it. Doug was it Antonio Daniels that that it was in Chicago or sprinted up, or I'm not sure. I know he was playing for Chicago. I'm not sure where they were. Sprinted into the stands and is like, hey, man, I I saw this altercation. Forget the game. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think you go up in the stands. Uh, that's n- nothing. Usually, that nothing good happens there. I mean, look, look. We've heard other things from, from, from players when they're dribbling up the court. You know, telling guys who are yelling at them from the sidelines. You know, th- giving it right back to them. I'm just telling you, like, th- like the, the these guys have rabbit ears. The players have rabbit ears, and I have, there's no doubt that there's incredible jealousy from from people. Or they're just they're trying to rattle you. There used to be a guy, uh, the heckler. You guys remember that there used to be a heckler, and he went to Washington Bullets games, right? And he used to sit there, and the entire game he would heckle Michael Jordan. The entire game. Now I don't think it, it rose to the level of, of necessarily like cursing at him, and maybe he didn't talk about his his mom or whatever. But like the entire game, that's what he would do. He was kind of part of the NBA lore, if you will. 
And so one of the things is a lot of these guys have been brought up with kid gloves. I mean, like Kevin Durant's a perfect example. I think Kevin Durant is, when healthy, the best player in the NBA. That, that's, my, that's my personal opinion. I understand he didn't win the MVP. I understand he didn't, didn't get out of the first round. That's my opinion. Okay? He didn't play, didn't play well for the most part against the Boston Celtics. They just loaded up against him. And that said, Kevin Durant was in Oklahoma City. They're playing the Memphis Grizzlies in the playoffs. He's not playing well. The Daily Oklahoman, at the time, now called the Oklahoman, the, the Oklahoman puts out a headline, Mr. Unreliable. And the idea of it is usually he's Mr. Reliable. In this series, he's unreliable. And there was such a hubbub over it that the biggest newspaper in the state issued a retraction over an opinion headline. Mm. Okay? So the idea, the idea that we're creating a world where you can't call a great basketball player who's usually reliable, unreliable, in a sports headline is ridiculous. It's utterly and completely ridiculous. But that's the bar that we set. And so guys are treated with kid gloves. And so the one time somebody yells something at them, they, they freak out. When just like somebody that doesn't have a check by their they don't matter. Now, I don't know what happened. Somebody makes contact with a loved one of mine, obviously. Okay, but it didn't look like, it wasn't like they were swinging. It's, it's some dude who looks like he's in his early 20s in the front row watching the game. I don't know. I, don't, I have no idea what's happening. But the idea that Chris Paul, who's playing game, look, he's frustrated because of the officiating. And the officiating is hard, honestly, because Chris Paul does it just as much as anybody, right? He's, he's a, now a victim of the crimes that he had previously committed. That, that's, that's really what happens, you know? And so it just it does feel like there's this um, amplified sensitivity from NBA guys specifically. Now, it also feels like fan behavior is worse than ever. But some of that is just the videos we see of fights at at games. Here's Charles Barkley on the incident with Chris Paul's family. We could put an end to all this stuff. Some of this stuff these fans say, let's take them right down to center court for five minutes. (laughs) I've always said that. Some of the crap they said to you, hey, let's give me five minutes to center court with them and to say, you ain't going to press no charges. Nobody gonna get it, no, and no, ain't nobody gonna be sued civilly. Say what you just said to me right to my face, right here for these five minutes. And I'm gonna beat your ass, beat the hell out of it you. Would, it would take you five minutes. <laughs> oh no, I'm gonna take my time. I'm not gonna beat them up quickly. I'm gonna jab them a little bit, then I'm gonna lay the haymakers on the ass. Well, obviously, I hear you, Foreman. <laughs> Charles Foreman. In a real world, in a real society, you know, other than a gladiator. That no, we purging people. It's not happening. We're purging people. I mean, that's really what happened with the uh, <laughs> the Malice of the Palace, right? You ever heard Bill? You ever heard Bill Burr's stand up thing? Uh, stand up on on the Malice of the Palace? No, no. Where he said, you know, for how many years people were like come up here, come up here, and they went up there, right? And Ron Artest taking out rows of people, <laughs> right? That, that, I mean, it's. And, and that part is true. That part is true. Sometimes people have a whooping coming to them. Right? But, but the problem is that, we, again, like we get to a point of sensitivity where guys get super, super rattled. You know, it's like fans are out of line, but players overreacting is out of line as well. And, and, and for whatever reason, there's a percentage of people that see what happened in Dallas and it only cranks them up. And we'd be remiss if we didn't point out that Chris Paul was incredibly frustrated yesterday, right? And when you're really, really frustrated and you're losing and you feel like the whole world's against you and then you hear somebody yelling at you and then you look up and your family's arguing with some dude in the stands, now all, this, now all of a sudden uh, you're going you're gonna to react. So, yes, of course, that would be amazing if – Say it, say it to my face. Like I, I've never understood how somebody can yell something vile at somebody. So, but it's the how many wrongs make a right, and and obviously all this is aside from putting your hands on anybody. But like again, we don't know what putting your hands on somebody is. Let me, if you shove somebody, like all right, that's different than if you're sitting there and you're off balance and you put your hand on somebody's shoulder. I don't know. There is no video of it. It's not. It's not. I'm not able to. To, to honestly judge, but I can tell you, and I think this would be realistic, is fan behavior seems worse, 
player reaction seems worse. It seems seems more sensitive. Are, are those th- two things fair? Well, let, let me ask this: When you say player reaction, they're sensitive. Are you saying they're sensitive for overreacting? They're sensitive for letting someone get to them. Like what? Or is it the timing? Where, Luca, going where, back to Luca and Phoenix. Luca's okay. Luca's walking off the court in Phoenix mm-hmm. when he was terrible in the in the fourth quarter in the second half against the Dallas Mavericks. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, excuse me, against the Phoenix Suns. Yes. Game Game Two. They're embarrassing him defensively. He was awful. Right. So he's walking off the court. Somebody from Phoenix says something to him. So instead of just walking away, he turns and he reacts to somebody. Now, it might have felt, the guy might have deserved a reaction. The guy might have deserved an ass whooping. But the second you turn around, there is a percentage of fans. I'm not one of them because I don't yell at dudes. I know they're way better than I could ever have been. Right? And if they, they play bet, like, I don't, I, I, like, why not just boo or cheer? I don't really understand that. Right? They, or even the you suck, like, you don't actually suck. So, well, like, whatever. But the point is, that the second you turn and you react, okay, now if every Phoenix fan's like, I got, we got him. Just keep yelling at him. We got him. We, we, we got him. We're in, we're in, his, we're in his head. So, well, uh, go ahead. Well, let me say this, though, Doug. You know there's a difference between, hey, Doug Gottlieb, you suck. And then there's a difference between, hey, Doug, I'll whoop your blank, blank, blank. Hey, Doug, you're a this, this, this. There are words that, you know what, like, if someone says this to you, whether it's right or wrong, and obviously, what you're saying, as we mature, we know it's nothing, but it tells you, I want to fight. Putting this on the table, it's a challenge to you. This goes all the way back to medieval times of, you know, having to stand up or fight for your honor, and someone puts a challenge in front of you at the wrong time, and it's like, hey, I'm here. (laughs) 